guys, Eva here. Sorry my voice is kind of gone because I spend my days now in lockdown talking on the phone for work and so yeah my voice at the end of the day is always a bit weaker. Today I just wanted to first of all apologize because I've been inconsistent with my uploading. Not that usually I'm too good but usually I'm better at this but again I needed to figure out a new schedule from working from home and I actually ended up working way more than I used to and then I kind of find myself never having time to actually film because I would get at the end of the day too exhausted to do so but anyway now I am getting better at this I am finding my way through these um, difficult circumstances we are in and I do take this opportunity to actually wish you know that all of you guys are staying safe and being healthy and all of you and your dear ones so I just wanted, because of this climate and that was going on in the world, thought it was a good idea to give you some recommendations of the books and comics that in the past have made me laugh and they are just a good time, I think, more light reads and more just feel good books and comics basically and I'd love to hear your recommendation in the comments down below so please 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 leave them down below and again if you're new I would love for you to subscribe so hit the button down below and that without further ado I'll start a mix of genres and I have here, I, I will not go in order between books and comics, I will just mix them up. Yes, I know that's annoying, but just, you know, bear with me. I also, some books are part of a series, but I grabbed the first one I could get my hands on. So I can show you the third volume or like the second book of the series, just because I picked them randomly whether I could find them. But I got all in physical format, which is good. First of all, I got a Open Fantasy, which I, I adored the trilogy. The first book in particular which is called Demon Road and this is by Derek Landy and you've got our main protagonist she comes back from school one day and her parents try to kill her and I don't want to spoil anything absolutely and I want to tell you why the parents want to kill her but basically she has to flee her parents and she goes on this crazy journey with a really weird man and his even weirder car and a bunch of creatures and just mayhem happens and it's just a trilogy it's really quick again because it's YA it's you know is really accessible and at the same time in this first book in particular the lore and the adventure they go through is it's amazing i think this author who did this called degree series which i never read uh, apart from one book i think uh, it's just it's got that way of mixing you know ya genre but with a fresh take and give you that some time the kind of entertainment that you sometimes find in urban fantasy that are um, targeted for older audience also this reminds me uh, of supernatural the tv show so if you are familiar with supernatural the tv show and you love that tv show you probably love this book i i adore this book we got the first comic which is chew <laughs> and this is by uh, john layman and rob gilroy i'll show you some of the art with this which i love this is one of the first comic series uh, that I we got the first comic, which is Chew, and this is by uh, John Lehman and Rob Gilroy. I'll show you some of the art with this, which I love. This is one of the first comic series uh, that I actually fell in love with, and after this I started reading comics way more. And this is the story of Tony. Tony Chu is a cyberpath, meaning that every time he eats something, he tastes something, he can see what that thing originates from, what's the history behind that thing and how it ended up being there. And I say this because Tony Chu is a detective and he is used basically to discover what happened in the final moments of their life to victim of crimes. And there is this crazy sci-fi world they live in where basically chicken is banned. You cannot eat chicken, it is outlaw. So Tony Chu is part of the FDA, which is a this group that makes sure that, you know, crimes related to food are followed through. Now, it's been many years since I've read this, and I do remember that uh, this was awesome. This was, oh, not only the plot is pretty interesting, although I would say that the end was not as good as the beginning, uh, I still think this is absolutely genius, it's a new idea. And then you got these people with these crazy powers and I just, it, this is really funny. This is really funny and at the same time gives you a good plot to follow and a lot of like twists and turns in the story. And this is definitely a series that it's worth binging. I, I couldn't stop reading this when I started and there are 12 volumes in total, if I'm not mistaken, it should be 12. And I loved it each of them again the end was good really good but not as good as the beginning of the series i think but overall is one of my ultimate series and it just made put me in a good mood every time i would read some of these 
it's just hilarious it's just brilliant in my opinion it definitely deserves a spot on this list but one of the series that i grabbed the first one i could get my hands on uh, is the disco board series i am uh, collecting the hardcover editions they are called the library editions and i absolutely love them but the disco board series is a 42 books long series without counting the 3.5 6.5 and so on so just consider the main ones i think you are rather around 42 books i write down here the number if i'm not correct but i make my way through all of them i am around 30 something so i am approaching the end it's a really famous series because terry pratchett created this world which is a parody of fantasy and this series has got different sub series i'm not here to do like a video on the disco world series which i will do once i've finished it but just so you know this is a parody of fantasy where you follow a few sets of characters they recur in different books throughout the series and it's just it's genius it's really full of humor to a point that you really laugh i did have some point like i remember in this book for example moving picture which is not one of my favorite and yet there are a couple of places where i literally had tears in my eyes and i couldn't stop laughing so this is one of the series that could actually get you to a point where you do laugh a lot and that's why i enjoy that even the books that are less interesting plot wise because in 42 books you're gonna have some hit and some misses but even the misses they are still hilarious, they are still a good time, they are still providing the kind of content that is overall so humoristic and so well written that you do not mind even if the plot is not all there and there are some gems. My favourite one so far is Ripperman, I put the cover here, I, I had, that's, that's the first book I've read in the series, I adore that book, I remember laughing and having the best time ever. And at the question, do you need to read them in order chronologically? Yes, if you can, do read them in chronological order, because if these recurring characters, they've got their own plots and their own stories and they do progress throughout the books so it makes more sense i'll be really honest to read them in order or to decide one sub-series and read all the books in that sub-series and then move on i think it just makes more sense i didn't do that at the beginning i'm doing it now but i missed out because i wasn't doing it at the beginning i was not aware of these recurring characters i thought each book was a different set of characters which it wasn't so yes however the first book does not reflect well the rest of the series so do give the first book a try it's really short you get through with it really quickly and then go on and it will improve and improve and improve he didn't miss it again but overall it is famous because it is brilliant it's brilliantly done and i think terry pressure convey really important messages but in such an funny way that i you, you love the series i think i've never heard of people really hating the series ever like there are people that you know they have not read all of it yes but i've heard but every people i've ever talked about they kind of remember the series still fondly and if you get this a chance you know why and then i've got a sci-fi which is the martian and this is by andy weir anywhere we are think and this was i'm sure you're familiar with this this was really popular a few years ago it's about this guy who gets stranded on mars and then he has to find his way to survive on mars for a bunch of years before he can be rescued there is a movie with Matt damon again you're probably familiar with this but i still wanted to mention it because if by any chance you have not read this this is a sci-fi that, that i think is still easily digestible and it's not too complicated and when i read this i was not a huge fan of sci-fi still not a big reader of sci-fi uh, but back then this was one of the first ones and because this was so hilarious in some places and our main protagonist it's got this kind of humor that he uh, brings on the page and you know he's in a really shitty situation and yet it can make you laugh i remember overall having a good experience with this i gave this 3.5 stars i would probably stand by this rating even today i didn't love these two pieces or anything like that however i do recognize why it's a gem is the genre and why it's so well received by the public because there is a humor there are a lot of things happening i think it's, this is probably one of the darker themes than the rest of the books on this because it is again it is a really bad situation it's in um so it's there is more tension throughout the book than the other books probably in the list but again I think it's well crafted for what it does and I always love a protagonist who is full of self-humor and just that can make you laugh. Then I got a urban fantasy series. I am grabbing the fifth book in the series because I don't have the first book. It's back in Italy, it's in Italian and to buy a copy in English. But this is the fifth book in the Charlie Davidson series which is a 
urban fantasy series where basically you follow Charlie. Charlie, she is a private investigator, but on the side, she is also the Green Reaper, meaning that dead people that are stuck on Earth, they can find her, then pass through her to their next life, only if they come to realize and accept what happened to them uh, upon their death. So she's got a lot on her plate and it's, I would say that plot wise, it's pretty standard urban fantasy. If you're familiar with the genre, then you are familiar with more or less what happens and the dynamics that these books have. Uh, there are some sexy times with the male interest, but I would say it's not heavy on that side, like it's really slow burning and there are some scenes, you know, especially when you reach book five and so on, but it doesn't take over the story, it's not the majority of the plot, so that's why I do appreciate it because it's not smart, it's literally like an urban fantasy, which I do enjoy as a genre with some smart in it, but it's a good balance. And which I really appreciate and Charlie Zilardis and at the beginning of the chapters there are like um, these kind of headers and each one of them it's about like a t-shirt or like a bumper sticker and they are the best I love this I love them so much and I cannot wait to start a new chapter every time to just to read it but even without that this would be really really funny I think um, the Rinda Jones is just a writing style flows by you read this really really quickly and there are some pretty crazy hilarious scenes so it's definitely a gem in the urban fantasy genre because it's a good balance between plot and just characters and just being extremely funny at times of course i couldn't do a video about feel good books without mentioning rick and morty again i grabbed the first volume i could which is volume number, I don't even know, seven probably. But Rick and Marty, this is created by the same people who do the um, animation. And you can find the first three seasons on Netflix. But here we cannot find the fourth season unless we pay for it. And then uh, for now, I have just watched the first three seasons. I love the show. I am not a huge fan of animations, but these I absolutely love, 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 love. And the comics, is, they gave you pretty much the same feeling that an episode might gave you and it's just I love the art I love everything I love Rick so just great and if you don't know this about this crazy scientist who is a genius but is really a prick at the same time that goes and live with uh, his daughter who's got a family and her husband is kind of he kind of sucks Jerry and then he's got two children and Morty the younger one goes on Rick on these adventures that are all around space and then crazy things happen and this is freaking hilarious. It's for adult only, can be graphic and there's a lot of swearing and a lot of things so you know just be mindful of that. Definitely worth a try and if you don't want to go for the comics there are always the TV show which is how I got around to know them and how I got around to love these two pieces. And because I'm always speaking for usually adult readers, I would say I'm going to suggest something for actually younger readers. It can be middle grade, oldish middle grade, young adult, young, young adult. I read the Georgia Nicholson um, series, The Diaries, when I was a teenager, probably 13, 12. Loved it at so much. I, just, I had such a good time while reading this. I was laughing. I was loving this so much, but I, to these days, I still carry a dear, dear fond memory about how these books were just a really good time. I grabbed the first book I could get my hands on, plus my, all the other books that I got for now in the series are in Italian. I've never finished the series, but I'm going to, and that's why I'm collecting them. And this is just about the crazy adventure of this English girl who goes through high school and she's got this really fat cat. If I'm not mistaken, the cat is really fat and they just... It's about her everyday life, but she's such an hilarious girl that it just makes you laugh. And I remember this is one of the series that, you know, I was laughing so much that sometimes my belly would hurt. But, however, a bit of a warning, I've not read this book since probably 12 years, so I wanted to continue on the series, but the rest of the series in English. So I am will make my way through the rest of the series, but I don't know if I stood the test of time, however. You know, someone who might watch this is actually on the younger side and I am sure that they would enjoy this. I will get back to you regarding if these survival test of times and reading them as an adult versus funny. I will definitely testify that these are for the right audience, at least perfect. I've got one of my favorite comic series ever together with two 
which is I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young. Now, Scotty Young does draw uh, cartoons, which reflects a lot on his art. Again, I think I picked up a random volume. And the uh, art style is exactly what you say on the cover. And this is a short comic series. I think there are only four volumes out, max five. And they all are about this little girl, Gertrude. And Gertrude, she goes to Fairland one night when she is a kid. And the way Fairland works is that once you are there, by the end of the night, you usually find this key to get back to your world and reality. It's just about a night, one night adventure in Fairland that kids get to have. But Gertrude, she cannot find the bloody key, which means that she is all of a sudden stuck in Fairyland. And now a bunch of years have passed and now Gertrude is still in the body with a little girl, but she's a 25, 27 years old, angry as fuck and mean as hell woman. And she wants to get her hands on the keys and she does not care who she has to butcher and maim to get to the key because she wants to get the hell out of Poland and this is this is hilarious I fell in love with this from the first volume yes again the end is not as great as the beginning but it's still worth it's still worth it it's just just for the art it would be worth it but the way this is freaking hilarious I cannot even describe it. So I would say definitely, definitely, definitely give this a try. Worth binge reading, just really short comic series. That's what I actually minded the most, is that this was just short-lived. And I wanted more, 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 more. I could get never enough of this. Worth a try. I will reread this a thousand times. And the last comic series I have got is for middle graders, as well as young adults, young adult and adults. I'm an adult. I enjoy this one. And this is Adventure Time. I grabbed the third volume by mistake, show you the art, but you might be familiar with the cartoon, the animation. And this again, it's funny, yes, never to a point where, you know, I was laughing out loud, but it's always kind of funny on, you know, it's got that vibe of humor and it's also beautiful art, really colorful and just these kind of crazy adventures that Jack and Finn, they go on and it's just a good time. Each kind of volume is self-contained so you know you can pick any volume with it practically i because of my ocd i need to go in order but i don't think you need necessarily to go in order just like self-contained it's funny i mean it's not funny out loud but it's still really like it's got this vibe of you know feeling good and then this kind of like smile on your face while reading this so that's why it's on the list and i say Again, if you like web animations or if you want to give this a try, it's definitely worth it. And then finally, for the books that I've actually read, I'll get to an honorable mention in a second, but finally for the books, I have got The Lightning Struck Heart by TJ Klune. Now, this is one of my favourite books in the sense that this is the fantasy book that made me laugh the most. And I'm not talking about smiling, I'm talking about I was honestly generally laughing laughing like i never remember laughing before like if, for example in the um disco War series there are some moments where i do laugh but this was making me laugh pretty much every chapter or something like that and is hilarious and the basic gist of the story is that you got sam sam is uh, the apprentice wizard in this castle where the wizard of the current king is teaching him and sam is in love with the captain of the guards but the captain of the guards happens to be betrothed to the prince. So first of all, you got a fantasy society where there are LGBTQ plus elements all over and it's just, you know, it's part of their world environment. And it's not even a topic in this book because that's just normality. It's absolutely amazing. It's just so refreshing. This is not about, you know, the, our protagonist being gay and not being accepted or like making a point. That's just the world they live in. Everybody can love whatever they want and that's not part of the story itself. It's just, you know, a characteristic that our protagonist has. And then the story is about, you know, a bunch of fantasy adventure they go in. And there is a lot of this based on the romance. Yes, but it's so hilarious. It's so, so, so freaking hilarious. Because on top of it, all of this, we got Sam and whose best friend is a unicorn-less unicorn, who's also gay. And this huge giant who is really dumb and... It's just, it's the best. Plot-wise, this is by any stretch not a great plot 
fantasy wise but because you love the character so much you love the humor so much you are so invested in the love story you honestly don't care you have your soon-to-be wizard in love with the captain of the guard who was betrothed to the prince who was kind of a prick is a real prick actually and then you got gay unicorns and you got dumb giants and you got a lot, bunch of crazy things happening and it's just hilarious it's full of sexual jokes full of graphic contents very swearing and all of that so be aware of that it's for adults definitely for adults it's kind of humor not everybody's gonna love but personally i loved it there is a part where these bards sing these songs in a tavern middle way and i i was i was crying crying for how much i was laughing to these days i wrote the core part of that on a piece of paper and usually it hangs on my uh, wall and i'm gonna show you in a second i've done this many years ago i'm not gonna say it out but and this is the main chorus of the song that this bard writes and sings in this tower middle point and it's just i love so much like i i am shit at creating art but i wanted that on my wall i need to create something better and again on the wall because people that comes always ask me about that and always say read this book you'll understand why this is on my wall but it's just this book is the best i love the series second book i loved as well and then I am gonna finish with the third and fourth book, which will complete the series. But I wanna pick up more by TJ Clune. I think his, his humor is just really up my alley, something I really enjoy, and I think it's really refresh taking. We'll never stop stressing how much this book deserves more love and more recognition. If you're okay with sexual jokes and if you can take it, and if you love the humor, I'd say maybe try a chapter and send more. See if you like the writing and the way it's done, because it's a bit peculiar but if you do this is the best and then before i go i wanted to leave you with an honorable mention which is kings of the wild by nicholas eames the only reason why this is just an honorable mention is because i've actually not read this yet but i heard for everybody who got around to reading this that this makes an awesome plot with a lot of humor and that it's just the right perfect balance this is a recent release kind of there is another uh, book out and this is about this bunch of mercenaries that are now in retirement and they have to get back together to um, help one of them getting back their daughter who got abducted or something like that i read this which is why i could just honorably mention it i thought it was worth still bringing this up because i trust the reviews i've seen and honestly and honestly everybody who's read this loved this that this book was gonna probably be in this uh, videos anyway if I got around to read it and again I love to hear your recommendation down below so please 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 leave them down below I love to read more of these kind of books and if you've seen these after the pandemic I think again these are still really good books to read feeling good books we all need those sometimes I think having feel good books in your TBR is always a good idea hope you enjoy your night day depending on where you are I'll see you next time ciao